Okay, we're back for the next segment, and now we're going to talk about holsters and other things, assorted items that we'll be carrying with us. Now, the holster purchase is very important because the, the, if it, the gun isn't comfortable the way you're carrying it, then you won't carry it. Then, well, then what was, what was the point? Let me show you an example of having a, a poor holster selection or no holster at all. All took place on Route 304 just after 10 30 this morning. You can see that blue truck hauling the lawn equipment move past, then that red Cadillac moved in front of the camera, and then all of a sudden you hear screeching of tires. My cameraman Nick, he panned over, as you're about to see here in a second. He's going to pan over. The two cars stop. You can see smoke coming from the Cadillac in front of them. The two, the two men get out and fight each other, throwing jabs at each other. They then throw each other onto the ground. This lasts in just a few seconds, then all of a sudden they get up, they get back into the cars, and then they drive. So what happened there was a road rage incident, and two guys got out and did the man dance. Uh, I'm not sure what precipitated the problem, but you can see how quickly it went to fists. Uh, the one gentleman got thrown to the ground, and when he did, his pistol came flying out. He may very well have been carrying, not in a holster, but in what is called felon carry. The gun just shoved in the front like that, and then the gun just kind of, well, popped out. Popped out. Or he had a subpar holster on that couldn't do what a holster needs to do, and it came flying out. Regardless, that is not an optimal situation to be in at all. So the holster has to hold the gun securely as illustrating. It also has to fix the gun in space. If our holster is sliding back and forth on our belt, that means I have got no consistency in my draw stroke because I have to reach for a different spot every time for the gun. Less than optimal. Finally, the well next I should say, the holster has to cover the trigger. If I go bashing screaming for the gun and my finger can touch the trigger while it's still in the holster, that can lead to a premature Negligent, negligent discharge and a hole in my leg or foot or worse. Not an optimal outcome. Finally, it has to allow for one-handed reholstering. And by that I mean, I cannot involve my hand to put the gun away and having to open the holster up in order to put the pistol away because what am I doing? I'm sweeping my hand to make that happen. It has to stay open, fixed, so I can put the gun away with, with just one hand. So materials. For the longest time, back in the day, and this is the first serious holster I ever bought, uh, we had leather. And it, the, the people are still manufacturing leather holsters. There's some excellent artwork out there right now involved uh, making leather holsters very high end. Uh, this is an example of a Galco holster, circa 1984. 384 for my AMT hardball R1911 I had back then. Uh, pretty good example of the breed, pretty nice leather, uh, retention screw. You'll see uh, how the, the mouth of the holster is reinforced to stay open when the gun comes out and it's been burnished all the way around. And this is an example of a belt holster which would ride affixed to your belt on your hip. A belt holster. About 15, 20 years ago, though, we had a new wave of uh, material that came online. It's an elastopolymer called Kydex. And now everybody and their brother is making Kydex holsters. They offer some advantages. Uh, they're a little bit less expensive, though some of the higher-end makers are like still at 85, 90 bucks a holster. There are economies of scale involved. Uh, they offer really good retention. They are not hydroscopic. And what I mean by that is, is that leather will actually absorb moisture from the air. So I have heard stories of uh, family heirloom guns in a leather holster in a safe for a long period of time. Well, that leather just keeps soaking up that moisture, and lo and behold, five years later, you pull your family heirloom out, and it's all rusty. So that's not what you would call optimal, either. Kydex comes in all variety of flavors. There are some great manufacturers out there. I recommend uh, companies, one is called Filster, P-H-L-S-T-E-R, Filster, Dark Star Gear, uh, Spencer Keepers, and JM Custom Kydex. 
Though there are others out there that are, are equally uh, as e quality, equal quality. So we already discussed belt holsters, traditionally on the hip. Other kinds of holsters you can have are will be inside the waistband holsters, and they ride, can be behind the hip, but inside the waistband, still affixed to the belt. But it's just inside the waistband. Then you've got appendix inside the waistband holsters. That's the newer genre, popularized by uh, Todd Green, who uh, left us too soon, and it's been like six or seven years already. Uh, strong intellect who repopularized, I should say, an appendix carry holster with an actual holster. I'm going to pop off camera for a second and popping back. The holster itself rides in the appendix position up front. Thusly. This is called the appendix inside the waistband for reasons in your appendix position inside the waistband. Oh look, I've got redundant slides, so we'll have to note, note, note redundancy on that one. So somewhere along the way, you're going to acquire the box. <clears throat> and this would be the box of good ideas, or not so much. Some of these holsters I purchased just to illustrate a bad idea. And if you do your research beforehand, you can avoid the box of bad stuff. So inside the box, you've got one holster. It's a manufactured by it's a, a well-recognized uh, brand, and it has a retention system on it. And you see how the gun is very secure. It's not coming out unless I use my trigger finger to depress the release button to pull the gun out. The problem with this particular type of uh, holster, retention holster, with a trigger finger release mechanism is that force of that trigger finger, if you're not exactly right, when you press that button, it can translate over onto the trigger and the weapon discharges before you even orient it towards the threat. Uh, I used to get into internet discussions on this particular holster in the past, but I, I, just, I just quit. People are going to buy what they're going to buy. It's my opinion that they're just unsafe by design. Uh, if you want a retention holster that offers the same uh, advantages, but le much less disadvantage, you can buy a, a holster from a company called uh, Safari Land. And rather than a trigger finger release, the mechanism is actuated with your thumb. Infinitely safer and just as effective as, as far as uh, uh, retention from the pistol. Ultimately, however, I view concealment as being a form of retention. If people don't know that you have it, they can't try to take it from you. Oh, one more thing about these holsters. When they first came out, I was a little bit naive about, I, this, I thought, this is great, what a genius idea. And I taught a class at Quantico, and it involved rolling around in the dirt a little bit. Somewhere in that process, uh, the holster, it was a, a, a gentleman had a 1911, a small pebble got wedged in that release mechanism. And that gun would not come out for love nor money. Something to consider. Other things, backing up again, I'm ahead of myself a little bit, to consider. Some holsters are called hybrid holsters. Uh, they are leather in the back for up against your skin. And then it's a Kydex holster bit in the front to hold the pistol. A thing to watch out for with these is that over time, the sweat guard portion of the holster right here at the top will bend out away from your body. And what people will tend to do, they will develop a habit to reholster the gun. To defeat that problem, they'll take the pistol, point it at themselves, knock the sweat guard out, out of the way, and then put the gun back in the holster. So essentially, they're pointing the pistol at their, uh, a through and through shot at themselves if they have a negligent, negligent discharge. Not what we want to do. Other options, you have a belly band, and I bought this, I was a little bit out wrong size here. I had some friends that carry this way though. It's an elastic band that goes around the belly. And way back in the day, they're making kind of a comeback now. You have these breakaway pouches that are built to carry with internal holsters. Oop, there we go. To pop guns out. Not my not my uh, my thing, but the, I, they have some other utility for wallets and whatnot. Not what I would consider though optimal, and because it's still still kind of a kind of a tell. 
If you see somebody wearing one of those things, it's just a fair bet that they're armed. The other consideration now for your holster is your belt. Uh, we are lucky. They, we, again, there's all kinds of manufacturers out there making really quality stuff. But far and away, the more popular belts now are uh, nylon belts, riggers belts of the sort. You, whatever you, uh, but there's still people manufacturing leather. Uh, I have a Milt Spark, Sparks belt, which I really like. I uh, haven't worn them in quite a while, though. I'm now, I've transitioned now to an uh, all nylon belt. It's a, a, a Graith belt, which they don't manufacture anymore. Lanyon Tactical makes a very good belt. Uh, Ernie Lanyon is also an awesome shooter, an excellent instructor. I recommend him highly. But the belt is integral in putting it all together for us in order to dis distribute the weight and make it more comfortable to carry. And again, I will we'll reiterate, if it's not comfortable, you won't carry it. So what was the point of the exercise? Some manufacturers actually offer a uh, belt, holster, and magazine carrier combos. Kind of cool. Now over here we have a selection of leather belts that are wide all the way around the side, but narrowed down, taper in the front, narrowed down. And that is if you're going to wear a suit, someone can't look at you and say, aha, he's you know, wearing a gun belt. Because as you can see, you have a wide all the way around for support, and it narrows up in the front, which people would see in your, from your open jacket. Purses and bags, uh, I'm not a fan of off-body carry. And these are uh, uh, generally a, uh, for, the, for the female market, it's, there are holsters built into purses, purpose-built holsters, or purse holsters, I should say. The problem with them, and there are several, is it's off your body. So when you need it, there, it you might not be within reach to get, to get the gun. Secondly, you have much less control. What is the first thing a criminal will seek to take from a woman? Or, and there, there's a thing called purse snatching, which is a consideration. Uh, unless you've got complete control all the time, there, I, there are, have been several examples of children rummaging through purses, finding guns, and shooting their mothers. So I'm not a fan of off-body carry for that reason. I, I recognize full well that there are some people in some uh, environments, some clothing styles, that's the, the best we can do. But just be aware of the consequences and the trade-offs. Bra holsters. There is a product on the market called a flashbang. And what it is, it's a small holster here that mounts on that piece of fabric between the cups uh, for smaller pistols. And the, uh, the goal is to flash and bang to get the gun out. I've got some female instructor friends who are advocates of the system. Others are strongly against it. Uh, it does offer a capacity to carry a pistol. Uh, in virtually any uh, clothing ensemble you might have. Uh, when you do the draw stroke, you must be sure to get your arm well up out of the way to present the pistol. And also, it's very difficult to present that pistol when you're un under any other kind of, of physical pressure. Some people actually, someone trying to grab a hold of you. It's hard to fight that off to get the gun out. And yet again, it may be the only option. Uh, ankle holsters have fallen largely out of fa fa uh, favor. It's just uh, a holster on the ankle. Uh, the draw stroke is kind of uh, complicated. I could come down here, pick your trouser up, get to hold the gun, and get the pistol out. I know many police officers still carry backup guns that way. Uh, the theory that if they're on the ground wrestling with someone, that their ankle is going to be a lot closer than it would be normally. Uh, but by and large, for citizens carry, I think that we're better served up here in center line or around the hips if you consider if this is 12 o'clock in my body, and this is 3 o'clock, and this is 4 o'clock, for a right-handed shooter, somewhere in this arc is much more optimal than an ankle holster. And of course, left-handed people are over here, 9 and, si nine and 6 in the back. There are some holsters called small in the back holsters, and they actually ride here in the small in the back like that. They are a disaster. Do not purchase them. Uh, they're worthless when you're sitting down and we're in, a, in a vehicle. If you are knocked on, the, on your back and you fall and this part hits, you're actually momentarily stunned. You can't even move because there's like, uh, I mean, actually base in your spine. That's a serious thing. So we, we avoid small in the back holsters as well. Belly bags I kind of discussed. I bought this one in a, in a moment of optimism, which I've now outgrown. Uh, shoulder and cross draw holsters. Uh, back in the day, we watched uh, Miami Vice. And they're driving the big boats, the big hunk, and uh, Smith & Wesson pistol 45s. 
and they've fallen largely out of favor. Uh, they, uh, they're very difficult, they're, they're comfortable, they're, di they're difficult to draw from though, it involves a lot of uh, movement and presentation to think of the gun effectively oriented. Uh, I don't think, I think Galco still makes them, I can't think of anybody else offhand. Uh, oh, here's a thing I will talk about right now, there are some holsters that are called paddle holsters, and I've got an example right here, and they're designed for easy on and easy off. Now the downside of easy on, easy off, the gun just pops on and this part of the paddle holster will hook under the waistband or the belt. And the problem I've seen with these, even the better ones, the more well designed ones, you reach for the gun and the whole package comes out because it's not permanently affixed to the belt. If time is an issue, and if we've had to pull our pistol out, time is now certainly an issue. And the whole package comes with it. I have to take a moment to understand, oh geez, I have a situation. I have to knock that holster off and get back to work. And that can, it's going to take time to recognize the problem and time to deal with the problem. So again, a not optimal solution. I, I'm not a fan of pedal holsters. Smart carry is a uh, form of a kangaroo pouch. It's, uh, they, they, you can carry a gun uh, inside the waistband up front. It's just cloth with Velcro in the back. I use one, one when, I, when I go to the gym, but it's not as secure as I would like, but again, we're looking at compromise. But there's a new product on the market I'll talk about right now. This just came out. It's called the Filster Enigma from my friends John and Sarah of Filster. And they came up with, a, a, essentially, it's a belt with a chassis on it that you can mount a holster to. So you, you can wear this gun, yoga pants, whatever, with no belt, no belt loops. I know that's a big fashion statement, particularly for lady, ladies now wearing yoga pants. You have this strap here that goes around the leg so the, the holster doesn't ride out when you pull the pistol. It's just the pictures on their website at filster.com. You will not believe the concealment and the uh, accessibility of these pistols. It's just a brilliant design, and that would be the Filster Enigma. Auxiliary items that I can carry, carry with us. Well, I'm a big fan of carrying pepper spray. I'm also carrying now the POM, that stands for Peace of Mind Pepper Spray, available on, on Amazon. It gives me, if I can quote from my friend Chuck Hager, something between a magazine dump and a harsh word to uh, alter or influence someone's capacity to harm me. A common uh, response to pepper spray is involuntary eye closure, and if they can't see me, they can't hurt me as, as easily. Something to consider. Uh, spare magazine and a spare magazine carrier. This is kind of a, a, a somewhat of a controversy. Some people advocate if the average citizen's engagement for concealed carry is three to five yards in three to five seconds with three to five rounds. And I'm carrying a pistol with a 10 or 15 round capacity, I'm still within the average. That's true, but averages extend on a, on a, on a spectrum. Uh, and I think as we're seeing now uh, increased violence, more group criminal interaction, uh, having extra ammunition on board is a good idea. It's one more thing to carry, I got that. Additionally, if I have a malfunction, it's usually magazine based, so having a spare magazine on board is, can be uh, a really good idea, or not. Uh, flashlights, I'm a big believer in carrying a quality flashlight around. Uh, the price point on these LED lights has come way down. This is a, uh, a Surefire, and I think they're like 65, 70 bucks. You, it f throws out 500 lumen, lumen, but it's, we all know it's Candela that really counts. Uh, beam Focus, there are other manufacturers out there that make great lights, Phoenix, Mod Light, whatever. Uh, I have found this probably the most useful thing I carry just to uh, illuminate things in my daily life. I'm going out to the parking lot, drop my keys, whatever. I can recall one time being in a theater when the power went out and I became the beacon of liberty. Everyone got out of the theater. They're just a cool thing to have. Uh, additionally, if you accept that we don't point our pistol at anything that we're not willing to shoot, so we kind of have to identify what it is that we're looking at before or, or, or have encountered. So we have a handheld light for that. Uh, even if you have a, a light mounted on your weapon, you still need a handheld light, I submit, for that exact same reason. Because we don't want to point pistols at not, things that we're not willing to destroy, so I need to determine first 
the validity of, my, of that threat. Uh, knives. For the longest time, I carried a folding knife, deluding myself that I had a knife I could, I could use to cut somebody off me if I'm in a close quarters fight. And I had that thought until I took some classes. And every time, by the time I got the thing out and going, I was getting the snot kicked out of me. There is no substitute, if you're going to carry a knife for uh, grappling self-defense, than a fixed blade mounted on the center line. This is a TDI investigator. I think it's a $44 knife. Uh, the earlier version was larger, and it had a, a holster, a sheath that was next to worthless. They've uh, heard our plaintive wail, and they have now redesigned the knife to almost a, a Craig Douglas clinch pick size. Uh, and they actually have, it's a little bit large, but still very much a workable, usable sheath that you can mount on your center line for left or right hand carry. If, however, you buy pepper spray or a flashlight or a knife, these are new things you're introducing into your self-defense capabilities. Well, that introduces a whole new logistical, logistical chain, plus things you have to train to integrate. You have to integrate now your flashlight in with your pistol work. You have to integrate a, and learn a draw stroke for your pepper spray. Things to consider. Uh, I like to also carry a small mini tool. It's amazing the number of things that you can fix on your own to be on your way. What does that have to do with self-defense? Well, it's more than just self-defense. It's about an independent lifestyle. And having the ability to fix small things that are kind of biting you in the butt to keep moving ahead, there's a lot to be said for that. I've got this little uh, Leatherman tool here in my pocket. It's called the squirt. Lightweight, don't weigh nothing. Uh, finally, I will leave you with this. Carrying with you the capacity to stop bleeding is the number one life-saving intervention that we can perform as citizens. Tourniquet pressure dressing on an ankle rig as I'm wearing right now, uh, in a filster flat pack, folding it up, whichever, dark star gear, pocket kit, whichever, there's a number of manufacturers out there but getting some training and stopping the bleed and then carrying with you the capacity to, to, to make that happen is the number one life-saving thing you can do as an armed citizen. Oh, crumb kit. Now, ammunition. Uh, there are a variety of manufacturers out there that make great product. There are some out there that engage in pure hyperbole and craft marketing schemes. Uh, I recommend Spear Gold Dot. Federal HSD or Hornady Critical Duty. They come in different bullet weights uh, for 9mm. The more popular is 124 and 147. They both do different, uh, have different terminal ballistic performance uh, in, in human target medium. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, but with any of these brands, you can't go too far amiss. The difference between them is minuscule. Now, any bullet on any given day, regardless of design, can fail in the regard of a, of a hollow point bullet. It can plug up with uh, clothing and not uh, perform as designed. It can happen with any one of these, but you're, you're well served by any one of these brands. Avoid anything that has flashy marketing schemes, uh, devastating, uh, rip, mega death kind of bullets. Uh, that they don't, they're not subjected to rigorous ballistic testing and gelatin uh, or, or, or flesh medium. It's just pure marketing crap. So hold on to your money and invest wisely. Ideally, you're going to shoot at least one box of your carry ammunition through the pistol you select. You're going to do this for a couple reasons. First, to validate and ensure that your pistol runs on that particular kind of ammunition. With modern arms and modern ammunition, probably not uh, a consideration, still something to, to or not, not a concern, still something to consider. Also, you need to understand where that bullet is going to impact, point of aim, point of impact, at 25 yards. You have to have an idea of that zero, or where that bullet's going to go at any given distance. Your uh, pistol sight combination, I, I can, when I shoot uh, my practice ammunition, I will note, uh, I, I note a definite high and left pattern at 25 yards. I can't shoot my carry ammunition, point of aim, point of impact, bam, 25 yards. So it's a consideration that you have to, have to take into account. Concealed carry insurance. Uh, yes, but whose? 
There are a variety on the market right now from USCCA, Law Shield. I, I, I hesitate to even mention the list, but they're out there. If you go to the Virginia Citizens Defense League website, they had a lawyer that broke down in a chart which plan offers what coverage. Now, I'll, I'll throw up here the caveat mTOR bit. Let the buyer beware. Uh, some plans will cover you only so far. Other plans actually will subrogate. Uh, you've got uh, the Armed Citizens Defense yeah, legal network, ACLDA, Armed Citizens Defense Legal Network with Marty Hayes out in the West Coast. And they give you access to a, the best potential professional witnesses. Uh, others pay $2 million. You have $2 million in coverage. But if you're found out, it, it just weigh carefully where you're going to put your money.